Uh, hi Neil, how's it going today, mate? How's uh, how's Rotterdam? It's great. It's a lovely city. I think it was going to be this nice. You got a, you got there yesterday, right? Yeah, going there. Um, yeah, at six o'clock yesterday. Cool, good stuff. Obviously, um, on Sunday night, 28th pro fight of your career. Um, how much do you yeah. know about uh, Koji Horiguchi? He's obviously ranked very highly, fought for the uh, flyweight title just a few fights ago. Yeah, he's an, um, he's an outstanding fighter, you know. He yeah, had five rounds with Demetrius Johnson and lost. Well, obviously he was losing the fight, but took Demetrius Johnson in one second to the end. You know, to actually tap him out, you know, it goes to show you how tough of a fighter he is. Um, it's going to be a tough ask, but, you know, but it's a fight at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. It's a fight, and there's two people in it. Um, I guess uh, the odds makers have you as as an underdog. How, how do you feel about that? Um, how do you feel about that for Sunday? <laughs> I think the, the Paddy Powers had me as an underdog for, or any odds makers had me as an underdog throughout my whole career, you know. But they've lost a few quids, I can tell you that. So, um, we don't mind, you know. Uh, the odds are actually mean to me, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. And I, I guess one question I really wanted to ask you today was, um, do you still kind of get nervous when, when you're in there? You're 36 of age now, as I said, you've had plenty of fights, but do the nerves still get to you when, when you're making your way to the octagon? Yeah, and any, any fighter that tells you any different, I believe the lion, you know. Of course the nerves get to you. The nerves get to you. The nerves excite and adrenaline and everything just kicks in all at once, you know, and then... It's it's just go to him, you know. Of course, um, you're watching everybody else for you. Obviously, if you're if you're up the card or you're told for you, and you're watching the two, you start getting nervous, you know. You see the way people are winning, you see the way people are losing, and of course the nerves kick in, you know. You wonder what's going to happen, but once he um, put you in there, it's just it's just basically what they say. It's just go to him, you know. You just have to do what you have to be training for, and that's just get in there and fight. Yeah, yeah, of course, and you know a lot of the guys in the division they they rely very heavily on speed uh, as, as one of the main advantages they have. They're, they're lightning fast. You're obviously very quick yourself, but do you think there's anything else in terms of you have over them in terms of experience? Why do you think you've kind of lasted out so long? Um, I would have said good living, but I'd be I'd be lying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just. Basically, a walk ethic kind of stuff. You know, it just has a positive, a walk ethic of just never stop. You know, and that's what I think has got me so far. You know, it's constantly keep going. You know, even when even when I'm down, it's like keep going. That's basically what I came down to. Yeah, and I guess um, I've seen a few of the uh, vlogs that you've been doing for uh, Severe MMA Online. Have you enjoyed doing them over the uh, past few weeks? Yeah, for sure. And are, are any of those guys that we've seen that you work with, are, are they making their way over to Rotterdam to see you fight or are they uh, just going to be watching from home? No, I'd say they're all going to be watching from home. You know, I've got a few teammates here and there's a few people that all come over to watch me, but they'll have a hell of a lot watching at home on Fight Pass. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there is. The support for you is absolutely uh, is massive these days. Obviously, especially in Ireland. Um, you, you had a little taste of fighting over in Vegas, um, obviously last yeah. July. What did you make of that? Did you enjoy the experience? Um, I enjoyed the experience. I didn't honestly enjoy the, the travel part of it. You know, the travel part of it. Yeah, it was it was a little bit of a yeah, when I got there, I was really tired, you know, because the fight day was still, I was still um, down, down and down, 
I, I never made excuses to say, I never took it away from them. Um, it was more good to say that I, told them, I don't make excuses like that, you know, but I underestimated the, the jet lag and stuff like that, you know, but it was a lesson learned and um, I enjoyed it. You enjoy it every time you see you go to, you know, with the UFC or on the, on anybody else before, you know, you just get to see different places and it's great. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, um, a lot of people would say that with a win over uh, Koji on Sunday, that you're you're really putting yourself up there as a legitimate title shot contender. Uh, do you uh, do you believe that yourself? And um, what what are your thoughts on Demetrius Johnson? Demetrius Johnson, his thoughts on him is just outstanding. Was said a tweet when he was fighting and stuff like that. He's just. To me, he's the number one, he's the pound for pound best fighter in the world. He's a fantastic athlete. The way he moves, the way he switches things up, it's just, it's a joy to watch, you know. It's just, um, it's just, it's really only a good just to watch. That's for the We have a high Gucci, you know, I don't think that, I think, I think about the fight that has just got on to me, and everybody knows how good the Gucci is, and you know, so, Thinking about stuff like that, all oh, means nothing to do with it, you know. So, it, I can't. I, I just don't think that's stuff like that. Yeah, that, that, that's fair enough. But um, do, do you kind of look at the rest of the year and say that I want to fight this amount of times or, or are you really just one of those guys who takes one fight as it comes and go from there? I just go from every fight at a time, you know. No one knows what's going to happen, you know. And the sport that we're in, you know, it's, it's, um, I live here, I live here like a fight and I get home Wednesday, it's like back at the walk. Thursday, you know, nothing changes for me, you know, that's just the way it goes. My phone rings to say, hey, look, we've got, so we've got a fight here, there, I'm back on the plane and gone again, you know, and that's just the way it goes, you know. That's the way it works for me. Yeah, yeah, and but let, let let me push the button one last time, Neil. If I could, if, if if you get home on Wednesday, you've won, and I could say to you, Neil, I can give you any fight in the world, any fight in the world, uh, apart from Petey Carroll, my fer fellow journalist, who I know you would probably want to uh, <laughs> get, 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 give a few hits to, but um, well, no, anyone. You said it, you know, any fight, you know what I mean? You said it, Petey wouldn't be a fight. I've seen them, they won't do that too. <laughs> but anyone but Pizzi, come on, there's got to be a dream fight for Anybody? you. Um, you know, look who wouldn't want to fight Pizzi's Chelsea. Yeah. You know, if anybody wants, like, everybody wants to fight now because it's about my own cake, so who wouldn't want to fight? You know? Yeah. Just let it step in there and just mix it up with the the world, really, wouldn't it? I'm sure it would, mate. I'm sure it would. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll catch up with you a little later in the week before your fight. Um, I'll see you in Rotterdam, and uh, thanks for your time today, mate. Thank you. Cheers, Neil.